Hello, today I'm going to be doing a scratch tutorial. Um, is going to be about, uh, one second, about this. It's basically a fairly simple project I made. It's, okay, well, you might think it's not simple because it's 3D wall rendering, but for what it does, it is surprisingly simple. It's also surprisingly laggy because on the Scratch website, this is like, this is way smoother on the Scratch website. But basically, I have two levels in it right now. The red sends you back to the start and the green sends you to the start of the next level. And I'm going to be doing a tutorial series on this. About how to do the rendering and all sorts of stuff like that. I also have some other stuff like you can raise and lower the quality. <laughs> like, see, now it's way smoother because I, I changed the quality. I don't actually really know how to get to the end of level 2 very well. You can also change the FOV, but, uh, the FOV, but that's kind of. It's just kind of weird. You can also make the quality really high, but. Like, there's not really a point to doing that. You can also, there's also a, a little in-game map, which also might seem kind of hard to do, but is surprisingly easy to do. And yeah, so after I finish this level, I'm just gonna start showing how to build it. There we go. And new. No. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have two sprites. Oh no, oops, wrong, wrong button. So have two sprites. The first one, call player, or you don't have to call it, but that is going to be our player sprite. And the second one is going to be our basic wall sprite. The player, there's a, I'm just going to have it as an arrow so that it can, so that anyone playing can easily tell which direction you're facing. If you hold shift, it will only allow the arrow to go in different angles of 45. So by doing that, I'm able to make a pretty decent looking arrow pretty simply. Now that I have the arrow, so this is what I have so far. You're gonna make the wall. Now to start, I'm going to make be a very simple square. You can do whatever you want with this, but I'm just going to make mine be a square for now. You can also hold shift on this if you want to put it on the square instead of a rectangle. So I'm just going to call these a sprite tumor. <laughs> Apparently it didn't work when I tried to rename it earlier. I'm just going to call this arrow. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is, as you can see, they're both there. I don't know why they appeared in that one location, but you know, choose where you want them to go. Now for this example, um, it, so if you want a mini map, you should probably put it in one of the corners, but if you aren't going to be using the mini map, you can just leave it in the center or somewhere doesn't really matter where you put it, but for now I'm going to actually just move this up into the corner. And then if I just set it to go to zero by changing these values, I have my little room in the corner. Now when flag clicked, I'm just going to tell it to go to zero, zero. And then the player you can just drag to where you want it to start. And then switch to the player sprite and say when flag clicked and then go to the displayed x and y coordinates which luckily it has popped up right here. So now there's this. You can make it look better if you want but like it honestly doesn't matter that much. Now the first thing that I'm that I did was when I made it I just added simple turning code. So I had two if statements you can, and then put 
key right pressed, and then you can also duplicate them if you want, and key left press. And then this is going to be very simple, just turn right and turn left. I'm going to lower these to 10. So now you can, using the arrow keys, control your player if you want. You can also do WASD. I'm just going to add that so people don't get annoyed because I've one of my friends always gets really annoyed when I don't add WASD to my games. So I'm just going to really quickly do that. Wait, what the other key pressed any? That's interesting. I, I haven't seen that before. So now you can turn around and you can also use these. So now that you have this, what you're going to want to start doing is you're going to want to actually start displaying it, which is fairly simple. So first what you'll need to do is make a new block. Uh, also you want pen. I haven't added that in yet. Normally you'll get it from down here, but for some reason pen's already in here. I don't know why I didn't add it. So you're going to make a block, and I'm going to call this clone. And set it to run without screen refresh. That's the only reason why I'm using a block here. It's so that you can have it go really fast. And then what you're going to want to do is, basically, this number for the repeat loop is based on how many lines you want across the screen. Um... I'm just going to open a new window basically to show what I mean. So basically, this quality variable up here means how many pen lines are going off the screen. So if you do it look like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then there's 10 more. If you set it to 300 quality, there are 300 pen lines going up and down the screen. So, depends on how high quality, like setting it to like 40 or 60 is fine, I'm just I'm going to have mine at 60. And then what you're going to want to do is, you're going to decide your field of view. It's basically, um, it's not what the FOV is in the other game, which, it's basically how far turned to each direction you want your player to see. You could make it so that you can play it player can see all 180 degrees or you can make it so they can only see like the 30 degrees in front of them. I'll just have mine be like, so what you're going to do is you're going to do this and then have half of how much you want to turn, uh, half of your field of view. Um, I'll do th 30 and then in here you're going to do turn 1 which now you'll notice you're turning in circles. So what you want to do is just have another turn 30 or whatever the first number is. Oh, and also, if you're doing like 30 and 70, well, it'll be different. You need it to be enough that it'll be pretty much this number multiplied by two divided by this number. So if I set this to like 120, this would have to become a 2. Okay, maybe not. Oh no, this would become 0.5. Yeah, but it's pretty simple. Hopefully you understand. It also just, I just realized I'm going to have it so at the start, you just point in the direction that so that you, when you start, you don't always be in a random direction. Anyway, so... Next, we actually have to create the clones. So what we need is, since each clone wants to do something different from all the other clones, we'll need a variable, which I'm going to call clone count. And I'm just going to put this here, and I'm going to set it to zero. And we're going to have change clone count here right in the front and then create a clone of myself, and then turning after. So now, it'll basically create this ball here. 
So we need to add the clone code. But first, I'm going to make a list, which I'm going to call distance to wall. Because what this does is when the, each, what, basically what each clone does is it goes until it reaches a wall and then tells the player how far away that wall was. But what you need to do is add, is make distance to wall 60 things long. It doesn't have to be the word thing. It can be anything. This is just going to get overrun later. But, well not 60, whatever you have your repeat here. So if you have it at 80, do 80. If you have it at 10, do 10, whatever. But I'm using 60. And basically what's going to happen is when I start as clone, repeat until touching wall. So you want it to go until it touches the wall and you want it to move one step, which will make it so that whatever direction it's facing, it will go in that direction. So now you can see that the player kind of shoots out a burst at the start. Oh, also I just realized I did clone count wrong. If you did what I did with clone count, delete it and remake it. And have it set as for this sprite only. Then set clone count to zero here. Change clone count by one. The, what this does is it makes it so that each one of the clones is assigned a number one through sixty. So the first clone, the far left, is one. The sec, the next, the, and the far right is sixty, and the middle one is like thirty or thirty-one. Now what I want to do here is once it reaches the wall, you're going to go into the wall, and this is kind of fancy, but this is the only way I know to do it, and do this, drag this in here, but then drag it into the player. So now you have this in the player, but that's not an option here. The player can't normally detect the distance to the player, only to the other objects. But basically, if you have this in a clone, it's the distance to the original player. So then you'll want to do replace item with distance to player, and right here put clone count. And now those will be filled in with their distances to the player. Now the one thing is they don't delete, so I'm going to have to fix that. And as you can see, you're constantly creating things that get updated. Although something you'll notice is the bottom. Actually, no, it seems pretty fine. But if you were to like me farther away from a wall, it wouldn't be fine. Also, you don't want this big black block in front of you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna call this ray trace. Because that's pretty much what it is. Make it run without screen refresh. And then put this in the when I says clone and move this code onto it. This basically means that it's now instant and you don't see the clones. So this, oh oops, I forgot that it's different. This, I know it doesn't seem like it's, like this is going to end up becoming 3D, but this is the first step you need to do. What you need, it's just, you need to simply detect how far away from the wall is the player. Now something else I'm going to do is, I'm just going to set the size to zero. That'll make it size 51, that's as small as it can go. This makes it slightly more accurate as well as if you want the player to be small. Now you don't have to have the original player sprite. If you just want the, if you just want this, the, the ray tracing stuff to be accurate, what you can do is set size to 100 here, and then set size to like 51 or whatever in here. But I'm just going to have it be small on its own. And that is going to be all of episode 1. In the next episode, we're probably going to start actually getting into the rendering and actually making visuals, and then I might get into some more complex stuff, 
like having levels and things like that, which isn't actually probably as complex as this. So I hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye.